two more episodes if absolutely everything goes according to plan and nothing at all goes wrong. Why do I always have to open my mouth and jinx myself every single time? Hello everybody, I'm Arden. Welcome to another episode of Minecraft Enigmatica 2 Expert. And as to what went wrong, we will get to that in a little bit. But first, we'll go with the part that mostly went right. Because today, I had wanted to bang out the remaining creative items over here to get us most of the way completely through the bragging rights section to get to the creative drawer. And the first step to that was to make the creative generator. And I'm not showing you the recipe, I'm showing you the crafting table because I went and prepared all of this over the last couple weeks while making the episode because we knew there were some gotchas here because these high voltage solar rays are still horribly expensive to make even though I now have the means to more easily do them as well as a few other things here that were time consuming. I needed to set up some more automation by setting up a replicator with a drum of UU matter here in my secondary automation lab to constantly make plutonium for those RTGs because my reactor is definitely not spitting them out fast enough and I wasn't really willing to babysit my normal replicator right now anyhow. So that's just currently kicking out chaos shards because we're gonna need some more in the future. The rest of this, however, obviously is all done. So let's just tick off that box now. Next up would be the creative tank, which we long since did. But as I've mentioned several times in the past, we actually are going to want three of these. So I made two more in between episodes. They're sitting up here currently feeding redstone and diamonds into the most commonly used things that run out constantly that I do need more of to make the, the flux electrum and the flux gems as well as just diamonds because those were the ones that were furthest behind. So that was easy enough and another one very quickly ticked off. But here's where things started to go off the rails because we need a creative gas tank. And I took a quick look at the creative gas tank and I was like, yeah, this is all easy to do. We've got all this. This is easy peasy. There aren't even any gases in here. It's all liquids like rocket fuel and some UU matter and some neutronium fluids. It's all easy. This is stuff we've got tons of. I'm like, well, I better remember what the creative gas tank frame is because that's that, that might be tricky, right? Right? Oh, oh, it does need a bunch of gases. Oh, no. So I, uh, I had some fairly significant moments of panic over there this morning. So I'm kind of glad I looked in this because this ended up being an all day project on and off. So let's talk about the first five here. The clean titanium slurry, iridium, draconium, boron and mithril. So thankfully the draconium slurry we already mostly had in production because we were doing the draconium crystals before for something that I actually don't even remember what at this point, but we were already making them. Which means that over here we had the chemical crystallizer, which was taking in the clean slurry we needed. Which means all we had to do is remove this and put a gas tank down and just extract the slurry. Although I have come to realize since I did this, I could have just put the tank right here on this minus symbol. I didn't have to actually remove this. So uh, that was realized a little bit way too late, but that made the draconium one really easy. And that also made me realize I could just pump in all of the rest right here. So I added a drawer and then realized I had nowhere near enough ores for this, which is why I was out on Neptune earlier because that's where I got man infused ores as well as some boron and as where I was getting the, the star metal ores before. So that made that easy. And then I also looked up and found out that Stella has the boron as well as the iridium and the rutile, which is the titanium. So all of this was covered. And this drawer actually works fairly because you only need eight stacks of the ore total. So I'm not gonna lie, it took me a while to get everything done and get it all processed. But once I had the stacks of it, it, it had processed pretty quickly. That part wasn't too bad. Skipping down here to the sulfuric acid. Well, part of the process to make this is to do sulfuric acid, we were pumping in through here. So I just dumped it straight out of the condensator into a tank. That said, I needed to make sure I had enough sulfur here because I don't actually have a ton of it. So I actually went and made a mystical agricultural seed for it and was making sure I had backups for that. So that part wasn't too bad. And while we're over here, let's talk about the hydrogen chloride because that's the machine setup that's right over here. And I initially had a thought to just put this in the end because its main component is brine, but then I remembered I have the creative tank and I just created a giant drum of it to dump it into here. So you take the brine and you break it apart in a separator into sodium and chlorine, which you just need the chlorine, and then you just need water into another one to get hydrogen, and we don't need the oxygen. 
and then you just combine them together to make hydrogen chloride. So that one turned out to actually be really, really easy. Although that seemed the most scary because I didn't know which one that was at the start. The ethylene one right here, well, that one was easy. I just went into my old ethylene generator, the advanced generator I set up forever ago, and just disconnected the generator and filled up with ethylene for a while. So that was fine. It's not like I need the power from that anymore anyways. And the last one is DT fuel from the fusion reactor. And I already had the chemical infuser here from before because I needed this to fill up a whole room. So I just moved the pipes up to here, connected them in and made a whole bunch of while. It actually deactivated my reactor for a bit, but uh, just like the advanced generator, it's not like I actually need this thing anymore. I almost use it as an opportunity to turn it into a uh, steam generator to get a lot more power out of it, but I uh, that's not something I need. So good news, everybody. That's one component done, a single component total. But bang, there we go, well on our way. That only leaves uh, everything else. Although the majority of this we already have automated, there's a couple things we should talk about though. So let me go fill in the things we do have. All right, so we've got almost everything filled in. The only thing here that might not be immediately familiar would be these gas charge pads, which is just mostly steel, and these pressurized tanks, which is just glass and titanium. So there's nothing really hard here other than the stuff that just takes 15 years to process, like, I don't know, the Ludacrite or the Ultimate Ingots or the Awakened Cores or, I don't know, these Ultimate Catalysts. But this is all done. The only thing we need now is rocket fuel. And thankfully, this is just a liquid so that we only need one tank of this. So we have our options, although the easiest is probably the Ender IO vat because it's just some hooch with some gunpowder and some redstone. And hooch is just plant matter with some water. Thankfully, we've already made the vat, I think, so we should just have to bring it out and fire it up. Yep, this is proving to be pretty easy because there's a vat with a water source on top of it and it's dumping hooch into that tank. Okay, and now we've reset it back up. I've drained the tank, tossed the hooch in here. Now all we need is gunpowder and redstone. And now we have rocket fuel. More importantly, we now have infinite rocket fuel due to the creative tank. So we won't ever have to make this again, but now let's go load it up and empty out the creative tank and toss that in the crafting grid too. You know, you would think I would have noticed that these are not actually basic ones, but signalum ones holding significantly more liquid. Not that it matters with the creative tanks. And with that, we now also have the creative gas tank. Now the question is, can I actually get the creative drawer done or is there way too much yet to do? Because this thing is chock full of expensive gotchas. A lot of this we've made before though, because thankfully we already have the infinity ingots. We already have the Twilight Forest trophy. We need to make another pair of tier six solar arrays though, and that's gonna be expensive. We need to use these as well, which is why I made the extra fluid tank. We need to make some creative essences, which we haven't done before, but these are thankfully not too hard to do. We should have everything to make the four for that. But we also have to make a ton of these ultimate catalysts, which take a while to make, a bunch of resonant cell frames, which take a while to make, these draconium chests, which are not hard, they're just weird. And then the biggest gotcha of all, the humongous, ME storage component. And I can see you're asking, how bad could it possibly be? Well, to make a single one of these, it uses 8,000 redstone. And that's not counting the other pieces I've already crafted for this, so it's probably closer to, you know, 10 to 15,000, if not more. So, uh, these take quite a while to cook. So I guess I'm going to be doing some cooking probably through the next day to try to get these done. We'll see how long it takes. I uh, hope that I can get this done this episode, though. This will be a real disappointing year if I don't. All right, so this might have been seconds for y'all, but this is most of my weekend because there were some surprises and some gotchas here. Most of it was things that we, I knew going in, but there were a couple things that caught me by surprise. One, with these gigantic ME storage components here, if I were to do this all over again and differently, I would absolutely not make those on demand. I would set up a drawer with a fairly large capacity to store thousands of each to be able to do stuff like this come the end of the game to have them already cooking. Because making those chips on demand made each one of those take, I, I don't even know, I wasn't keeping track, quite a while, like an, over an hour each I wanna say. But it was, it ate up a lot of my uh, A2 capacity to make those. So I would not recommend doing that on demand if you haven't gotten that far. Two, I actually did have a resource bottleneck and it was not any of the things I was expecting. 
because I knew that like these infinity ingots were gonna eat up a lot of the singularities and the singularities were gonna be a problem. But surprise, one of my main bottlenecks was right over here. It was the ender pearls. And while you can see that I have 30,000 of them in there now, that's uh, I had that's because I had to resort to some drastic measures to deal with this because I, even though I was making them in my normal conventional farm off of ender lilies and off the mob farm, and even resorting to a mystical agriculture seed, that wasn't enough. I actually had to resort to making a barrel of resin ender and then dump that in, into a Tinker's IO smart interface here. Because thankfully there's a gem cast you can use to make that and that's the only way I got enough to do this. Because these end crafts consume them in the thousands if not the tens of thousands. They go away quick and I thought I had that well under control before I came up to the last two days of this pack. And the other thing I ran out of was Awakened Draconium. I, I pretty much completely bottomed out on that because the end of this is also consumes this at almost every single single component because we use them making the catacores, we use them making the ultimate catalyst, we use them making ultimate ingots, we use them all over the place. So uh, that's pretty bad. Also as predicted, these solar arrays were very very expensive. The high voltage solar arrays that we had to use in this and in the tier 6, that took the long while that it normally does. But now we can take this, we can go into here, we can take the tier 6s. These took almost as long to make as the rest of the creative drawer did that I didn't already have made. But let's put the solar neutron activators in here and grab the other one. And now we can put these in here. And be very confused that we don't see the creative drawer. Let me figure out what I set up wrong. All right, this one I think turned out to be pretty easy because it was this black hole tank here. I misread the recipe. It's actually supposed to be the black hole unit. So let me swap these out. All right, and now we have the creative vending upgrade and we are mostly done with this pack. But before I take this out of here, I want to discuss something because you notice that this is all of the most expensive things we could possibly make in the pack and creating this will by default let us make anything we want for free that we have already made and put in a drawer. Now, I cannot take credit for this advice. This was something that I saw on Reddit that jogged my memory when I was looking up something else. Before you make the creative drawer, before you pull it out of the table, what you wanna do is set up a bunch of drawers that are empty, lock them, and put all of your expensive components in there, including the other creative items. Because that way, as soon as we make the drawer upgrade here, we can take it, put it in there, take out as many as we want, and put them in all of these, and we will have all of these items back, including the creative tank that I was so worried about needing to have back as soon as we made the drawer upgrade, which that was kind of foolish, forgetting that I could even do this. So uh, yeah, fill that up. But I guess let's uh, mostly finish the pack here, and let's take that, and let's take this, and put it in the drawer. Well, I'm baffled and I can't actually figure out how to get the creative drawer upgrade into the drawer to pull them out. But thankfully there's a recipe that just lets you straight up dupe them. So I was I made a couple stacks of them. I'm feeling really dumb right now. If anyone knows how to just insert it in a drawer, that would be uh, useful because I couldn't figure it out. But now we can just go on a spree and make unlimited all the things including a whole bunch of creative fluid tanks, an infinite octuple compressed cobblestone. You get the idea. So now we have all of these expensive things free. We are basically in creative mode now, you know, with some caveats. But uh, yeah, almost completely done with the pack now. And I've honestly gotta say, it feels weird to be this close to the end. But I guess let's go uh, collect our total no rewards. But we can at least say that we are almost finished. And we will wrap this up next time as I go clear out the rest of the breaking rights section. But it's been a long, long weekend for me, folks. So I think it's time to take a break. <laughs> Anyhow, if you found this episode interesting and entertaining, please consider leaving a like or subscribing if you're new. As always, I'm Arv. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.